Hey, this is Landon from Quintify Backs to CNC. You're watching build vlog number four. If you haven't already, click that like and subscribe button and let's get to the video. In the last video, I showed you how I put together my AB head utilizing 3D printed components. And in today's video, I'll give you a look at my CNC control box and show you how I wired everything together. Before we go into the box, let's take a look at the outside. These right here are aviation plugs, and I chose to use them to connect all the components from the outside of the box, such as limit switches and stepper motors, to the components on the inside of the box. To wire up an aviation plug, first you tin the wire. Then you fill the socket with a small pool of solder. Lastly, rest the wire on top of the pool of solder you just created and heat it from underneath the socket, allowing the wire to melt into the pool while adding a bit of solder from the top. Repeat that for all four pins, and this is how it should look. So now it's time to take a look inside the box. We have Vincent. We happy? Yeah, we happy. First things first, if you didn't notice, it's a little messy. I decided to wire my CNC control box inside of a PC, and that presented me with more challenges than I initially thought. Also, this is not only the first CNC control box I've wired, but it's also just the first thing I've wired in general. Like, ever. And that's one of the reasons I chose this project, because it caused me to get out of my comfort zone and try a lot of things that I've never done before. I probably will revisit this box and maybe transfer the components over to a bigger box where I have more space to organize wires and components to avoid issues like noise and interference. So I thought it would be easiest to explain what's going on inside the control box with this block diagram. Okay, so the first thing that happens is that AC power comes into the control box from the wall and goes to my distribution blocks. From the distribution blocks, power is distributed to any one of my DC power supplies after going through my on-off switch. The power from the 24 volt power supplies goes to the stepper drivers. I am using two 24 volt 20 amp power supplies and each one drives three out of the six total stepper motors. But before we can control the stepper motors, we have to get signal from the CNC controller. A 12 volt power supply is used to power the Meso CNC controller as well as the brushless DC motor I'm using as a spindle. The Meso controller is used to provide signal to the stepper drivers which control the stepper motors. So let's take an even closer look at the stepper drivers and the CNC controller so you could better understand how to wire them up. A stepper driver amplifies the signal from the CNC controller and sends it to the stepper motors. To utilize the stepper driver, you first give it power from the power supply. You then connect the direction and step terminals to the direction and step terminals on your controller respectively. Lastly, you wire the A and B coils of the stepper motor to those on the driver. A CNC controller outputs a differential signal which gives the stepper motors information on which direction it should be spinning and how many steps it should be taking. On this controller, you see there is outputs for all of the axes. You connect these terminals labeled the S and D for the step and direction to the step and direction terminals on your stepper drivers. This controller also has plenty of inputs for limit switches, e-stops, encoders, and anything else you can think of. And the best part about it all is that it doesn't require a PC. You just connect it directly to the monitor and you're good to go. Now it's time to give y'all a look at how the machine jogs. You can go left and right using the x-axis, forward and back using the y, up and down with the Z, and you can spin the head all around using the A and B. And here's how she looks when you run a 5-axis G-code file. So the next thing I want to show you is how I wired up this brushless motor as a spindle. I wired up this 45 amp ESC back to the 12 volt power supply inside the CNC control box. I then used this servo tester connected to the ESC to control the spindle speeds. And it's that easy. 
So I got a few comments in the last video about releasing plans for the build. I'm still constantly tweaking a lot of aspects on this machine, and I'm not ready to release the full build plans. However, I've decided to upload the plans for the version 1 AB head, and they're up on Thingiverse right now. Those plans are completely free to download, and the head totally works, but it's not exactly as rigid as I would have liked, and there's also just a little backlash in play in both axes due to the design. However, I'm currently working on redesigning a version 2 head to eliminate the issues that I had in the V1 head, so I can start making real 5-axis cuts. I plan on making the version 2 head plans as well as the full build plans available for sale when it's all finished. I don't know the exact pricing right now, but if you leave a tip when downloading the STLs from Thingiverse and send me a screenshot to the email linked in the description, I will give you a 20% discount on any future plans as a thank you from supporting the build from its beginnings. As always, thanks for watching the video. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button if you're trying to stay updated with the build.